Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, we are staying here in the present to talk about a brand new Avatar game. You may notice behind me is Avatar The Last Airbender on PS2, and here in front of me, we have Avatar The Last Airbender The Burning Earth, the game famously known for the easiest thousand gamer score you can ever get, and also Avatar The Last Airbender Into the Inferno. I had this whole plan. Oh, there's a new Avatar game coming out. I'm gonna do an Avatar Games retrospective. I have great memories of all these games. Well, uh, Game Mill is playing a little bit of chess out there because because this game, as far as I know, did not have a release date. Suddenly, it's out. It's apparently really bad. No reviewers got codes. And this one, it's trying its best to fly under the radar. Now, me, I just have that good smell for a bad video game. You know, I've played my share of Redfall this year. I played my share of Forspoken this year, Lord of the Rings Gollum. I've been through the ringer in what is one of the best years in gaming. But I'm not stopping there. I gotta do a job here, all right? So Avatar The Last Airbender, The Quest for Balance is out now. It's on Switch, it's on PlayStation, it's on Xbox. It's $50. That one hurt. It hurt to put the money down, but I had to see what they're trying to hide here. You see, Game Mill is the equivalent of THQ for us 20 year olds growing up with a lot of, you know, Avatar games, Nickelodeon games, that sort of stuff. Game Mill is all over the Nickelodeon games, and they've done a decent job with the likes of the Kart Racers. I thought Nick All-Star Brawl was great. I can't wait for the sequel. But then you get something like this, and I just can't help but ask the question, why? So I had the original Avatar running in the background here. Normally we have the game we're talking about as the one that's on the CRT. So you may be wondering, well, why that? Oh, it's Avatar, right? No, it's because like this is literally the same game as the one we got in 2006. I'm gonna break it all down for you. If you're new here and you're into the occasional review, but otherwise nostalgic retrospective content, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. Let's begin with setting up the story. So this is a rerun of, as you'd expect, books one, two, and three. The difference is it's told from a different perspective where Iroh is sitting around helping pen this play that effectively is telling the tale of the Avatar the right way. And so there are some, if you will, twists and turns and changes, but for the most part, it's the very familiar story that we all know and love. Now, what blew me away immediately is how cheap this game feels. Like right off the bat, when you see these illustrations that are, by the way, well-drawn, you see the repetitive motions that they're kind of like marionettes on a string and I just got this memory of like E-Bombs World and Flash games I saw that had way more distinct, unique, consistent animations compared to what was available here. So right away I could smell the cheap, I could smell the low budget. What I will say is the game works. The game runs and that does not make it the worst game of the year where games like Gollum exist, games like Redfall exist. This game does work, it does play, it's just not fun at all. When you think of how popular the Avatar IP is, it's certainly well worth, or at least should be a candidate for a major investment to make a gigantic video game about. I look at the success of Hogwarts Legacy and I think that Avatar The Last Airbender could reach that same height. Why do I say that? This show is having a resurgence and they haven't done anything lately for it. And I'm not saying that in a mad way. I think it's one of the more perfect stories told where what more do you want to add? I think Korra is also fantastic, but nothing new has really been injected into this IP. They just keep going back to the well, and this game shamefully does that. It's to the point where as you keep playing it, it is, as the title says, offensively bad because I just look at this IP, I put it in high regard. I remember as a kid growing up, I remember sitting on the phone with my friend, we'd watch the episodes together, talking about it, seeing what's gonna happen next. And that was one of my favorite memories growing up. So I always dreamed of a great Avatar game like many of you out there. This isn't that. So the story set up, it's immediately not the most original tale, which means it's a trip down memory lane. Quite fitting for this channel, I believe. But it's the puzzle focused gameplay that you can tell it's geared for a particular audience and I'm not gonna go too hard on that. It's clearly aiming for the younger kids. But I think in one way, that's fine. But in the other way, I think that this game is borderline predatory in a sense because it's so cheaply made it's just got the avatar logo slapped right on it that they're like oh parents are gonna fly right in and buy this one for their kids and they're not gonna know any better because it's avatar and kids are gonna love avatar 
What I mean by that is some puzzles are as simple as moving a box, but then me, uh, you know, the game critic, if you will, will notice things like after I move that box, when I'm trying to exit the room, Katara just keeps running into the fire over and over and over. And it's not until I exit the room that she just teleports with me. So there's moments there where you can see there's a game that has received the bare minimum of fine tuning available, but also there's really no challenge here anywhere to be found from combat to puzzles. And I think there is actually some idea here that could have greatly been expanded upon because they keep it at the absolute most simple they possibly can, which again, targeting a kid audience, I guess I get, but kids are smart. They can figure things out. You know, the games that we were playing when we were growing up, come on now, don't insult the youth like this, all right? But Avatar Quest for Balance, you'll have moments where you'll airbend a box and get out of the way. You'll put it on an elevator, slide it down, block off a water jet. And the reason you're gonna be doing these things is to access bits of treasure all over these levels. These treasures are things like coins, scrolls, tokens. And they'll be used to buy items at stores. They'll be used to level your characters up. They'll be used to unlock new abilities within the water bending, fire bending, earth bending, air bending, and so on and so forth. So there is an idea here, like a Breath of the Wild style avatar game in the terms of elemental interactivity and manipulating the environment, I think would actually be pretty awesome. And this game lightly, like it puts a fingertip on that idea, but it's enough for me to spark the imagination and say, hey, if we got a little budget behind this, a different team behind this, and someone who really cares about the IP and isn't trying to rank children dry, if we just like, wipe all those off the board, we actually have something here that can be expanded upon. So yeah, it's very puzzle driven, but I think it's puzzle driven because the combat is so unpolished and that's right when you see it in the boss fight. You fight Prince Zuko like a million friggin' times because the story is so poorly paced and they don't put anything of interest in between. You're fighting Zuko every single time you turn around. And I mean, they couldn't even get the cutscene recreation right to make things a little more epic. Like one thing that we're all accepting of with, for example, the Ultimate Ninja Storm games is, all right, yeah, like I've kind of seen this before, but because we have Cyber Connect here who are just animation gods, we get to see our favorite fights play out before our eyes in ways that the show didn't quite get right. So at times the game is better than the show. But here, you get a cutscene like this where Aang's trying to escape from the Fire Nation and he knocks the ice down to the ship. Like a really cool moment of creativity in the show, I thought. And, and look how it plays out here. No music, no sound effects, nothing. It's just, just it, like, I can't express to you all. I'm sure you already can tell. You've already seen it, how cheap the game is. And I find that to be the biggest insult of all. Avatar, I get it if you don't want to go all in, but the fact that we're treating it like this is a big risk to the point where how much budget was this game given? The fact that it had illustrated cutscenes. I'm honestly okay with, I thank Spider-Man 64 for that mindset. I love the comic book style cutscenes in that game. So maybe that's why I typically don't care about that stuff. And I could get by with that. But why is it, it usually it's because we're trading off. Like, okay, we're gonna do these illustrated cutscenes because the gameplay is gonna be highly animated, off the walls, high octane action. It's, it's not that. I think probably my favorite part of the game is when I put it in quotes, it opens up a little bit. I was running around a village where the Kyoshi warriors were staying and I was able to do a couple of side quests, very basic side quests. I gotta go get your mother's locket. I gotta go listen to some of the worst compressed audio tunes play. Take a listen to this. I had to run into the middle of the village and hear this. Yeah, th so that's like the extent of the side quest, but again, it's finger tipping the idea of Oh man, what if I was able to just, like not even true crazy open world, what if I was able just to like run around a little bit in a more open area kind of Avatar game? How cool would that be? And that's what brings me to this game right here behind me. Avatar The Last Airbender on PS2. Literally the same thing. Linear action game that you just run through the, the highlight reel of locations that you have seen in the show thus far. The difference is this game, Quest for Balance, 
manages to collect all of the books and put them into one, which I guess is great. But yeah, it's the highlight reel. You run through all these places, you go through crappy fights otherwise. And I'll say this, I remember playing the Avatar Last Airbender game on PSP a lot. and. That game was awesome. I don't know if that's probably nostalgia just talking, but I, I really dug these games as an achievement hunter at one point, very hardcore into it. Uh, I love this game. That's for sure. I never got beyond the opening area, but oh, I love this game. Thank you. Thousand gamer score. Always appreciative of that. But what's crazy is this game that we're talking about today came out just a few days ago, right? Came out just a few days ago, 2023. It's crazy that I'm looking at a 2006 game and thinking, Huh, like these are, these are almost identical video games. And normally that can be said in a complimentary way. Like, oh man, it really evokes the spirit of the classics. But no, like it's as linear, it's as basic, it's as, as simple. And, and I think it's acceptable back then, not just because of where technology was, but standards were far lower. We were cool with this type of stuff. We would get an avatar game like this and be like, oh my God, it's, it's not trash. And that's all we wanted was a game that wasn't trash. But now standards, have risen. And so with that, what's the big thing they do in this game though? They got these little surfing mini games, which again, awful animations to start off. Like you see Aang practically dry humping this fish fin or something like that. And then you're off to the races. So it's uh, pretty much a game where there's three lanes and you gotta collect coins as you go through. It controls terribly because the response time is sluggish. Sometimes you're gonna dip underwater, but the idea is you're gonna get on penguins and fishes. And you're gonna do these three lane races to get to the end. You're gonna get bonuses if you get enough coins and, and that'll unlock more of these tokens that you can then spend to continue leveling up. So it's, as you would probably expect, a pretty lackluster game. And I'm gonna say what I tell everyone, every single time I have to review a game that is passionately mediocre. And it's when you are passionate about doing Jack Diddly Do, that bothers me more than in just a atrocious game, right? Because to me, it means that you had the opportunity to do more. And as a consumer, it feels like there was a deliberate choice made to do the bare minimum to cash in. And I still think a brand new Avatar game with a big budget behind it. Look, they're doing the last Ronin, y'all. I, I love TMNT, but they are making a triple A last Ronin game because there was a lot of hype around a comic book that I imagine it's very popular, by the way, but most people haven't checked out yet. That was an easy show idea, anime idea, what have you, but they're making a game about it. Because when you read it, you think of a game. And I still think that if we're gonna get things like that, right, where there's passion, where there's excitement and enthusiasm for an idea, there is the potential for a great game. And I just don't feel that at all with Quest for Balance, which bothers me the most, is that you look at things like the art style, like the character models, in my opinion, if they're not well animated, look good enough. I'm okay with the game's visual presentation. I can live with the illustrations. It's just that it does nothing beyond that. And look, no one should be too surprised by this. When you look at what we got in the initial trailer, it was definitely the vibe of, oh, this is a PS2 game. Yeah, that was not people trying to be slanders on the internet. It is literally like the game behind me. So close, I can scarcely believe it that I'm playing a game from 2023. And that is what's most frustrating of all. It feels like no modern gameplay design conventions, no modern technology was implemented into Avatar, the quest for balance. And it makes me want to pull my hair out. But if this game were $20, I think they may be able to get away with it, but they, they, they're they charging 50. And when you look at this, and then you look at the Legend of Korra game that we got from Platinum, one that was destroyed online because it was not balanced well, a problem with Platinum games many times. Don't worry, they got my Ninja Turtles with Mutants in Manhattan. That game is horribly balanced too. So I hear you Avatar fans, I hear you, I know how it feels. And I've heard that, you know, with Legend of Korra, that video game, it gets better the second time around, but you still gotta go through a full game of getting squashed before it feels like it balances out a bit. So what I'll say is this, bring back the Legend of Korra game, let us at least have that because that is outside of every Avatar game to exist, the one that stood there and said, we have something of quality to offer. And, and no surprise there, it's Platinum Games. But this one here, Quest for Balance, I just, I wish I could say it's unbelievable, but the, the trailer really did convey exactly what I expected, which is, oh, this feels cheap, like a cheap toy that's gonna get thrown away and hopefully gets buried and only kids and parents who need a gift for their kid are gonna pick up. 
But if you're a parent watching this, I hope you listen and get your kid a better gift. Truthfully, I do, because this game ain't good. Maybe buy them the games for PS2. I mean, these are acceptable for their time. Get them started on a little retro game action. I mean, that's what you should be doing anyway. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got to say about this new Avatar game. I had to get it off my chest. It's a really bad time. So I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. I hope you haven't picked it up, but if you have, fire away down below. And with that, take great care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.